Don't think that I don't feel love. What I feel for you is real love. Her star. Real love child. Never meant to be. Love child. Born in poverty, love child. Different from the rest, love child. Always second best. Start my life in an old torn down tennis slum. My father left, he never even married mom. I shared the gift my mother knew. So afraid my friends would see I had no name. Oh. Not nowadays. Nowadays they don't a bit more care about that. They're like, what? What kind of song is that? Hmm. I keep thinking about Devante Swain. Y'all know Devante Swing from Jodeci. Somebody said, what's wrong with these damn young people, man? What's going on with them? <laughs> Devante said, they missing love. And look how profound that shit is. Mm. They're missing love. Ain't no love. And so where there's no love, mm, man. You put yourselves in all types of situations. That's all I can say. Like these damn judges. These corrupt judges. I'm just gonna, we're going we're gonna to keep on this same vein of how we abuse our children. Corrupt judges must pay $200 million for shipping kids to for-profit prisons. Did y'all hear that? Corrupt judges must pay $200 million for shipping kids. Woo! Listen, if this ain't too, if this ain't the craziest thing you heard, check it out. Change for kickbacks are finally facing some financial consequences. Uh, they have faced criminal investigations and are serving prison sentences as a result. But now there's money involved too. They've been ordered to pay more than two hundred million dollars to hundreds of victims. So U.S. District Judge Christopher Connor awarded one hundred six million dollars in compensatory damages and one hundred million in punitive damages to nearly three hundred people in a long-running civil suit against the judges. Writing the plaintiffs are uh, the tragic human casualties of a scandal of epic proportions. So this is a story that we actually covered eight years ago when it broke, and it was just mind-numbing how callous these judges were and how profit-driven they were. They just wanted to pad their own pockets with these kickbacks. Now, the U.S. District Judge uh, Connor ruled after hearing often emotional testimony last year from 282 people who appeared in Luzerne County Juvenile Court between 2003 and 2008, 79 of whom were under 13 when Judge Mark Chivarella sent them to juvenile detention and 32 parents. Now, uh, what exactly did these judges do? Well, let's let's take a little step back in time and watch this report that details it. Elon Musk is backing out of his $44 billion Twitter deal, but for Americans... Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Do you remember my son? This mother's rage and fury greeted former Judge Mark Chivarella as he exited court Friday. Chivarella sent Sandy Ponzo's son to juvenile detention for possession of drug paraphernalia. Years later, he killed himself. Prosecutors say Chivarella was involved in a kids for cash scandal. He's accused of taking a million dollars in exchange for putting juvenile defendants into private detention centers. In one reported case, he sentenced a child to two years for joyriding in his mom's car. Some of the kids he ordered locked up were as young as 10. 
In 2009, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court dismissed 4,000 cases Shivarella handled, saying they had no confidence in his rulings. So uh, luckily, that prosecution, that criminal investigation led to prison sentences for Shivarella. Um, so what type of shit is that? You see how we prey off our own, our, our, our own babies? Now, just for the record, for those of y'all who you know really want to know, um, most of the children that were involved here was uh, Caucasian children. Um, it didn't matter because their lust for money and thirst for blood was just so crazy that they would put those babies in jail. In, in I mean, basically for profit. Think about that. We are the only nation Man, that incarcerate our children like this. Um, I had my windows up here, and I guess it closed down. But I, I had the uh, incarceration rate for uh the different cities, different countries, and just put it like this: none of them, all of them put together, don't add up to what we do incarcerating and feeding off our own young. That's why I said I don't want to hear about this hypocritical stuff. Oh, we love the children. The children are so important and it's a hustle. Just like you saw the CPS worker try to get the little girl to sell her body. You know, I mean, this is a cesspool, you know, and if we don't if, if we're going to clean it up, we got to clean it up. For real, for real. And we have to start with the children. Because, see, somebody got to speak for them. And everybody else just want to abuse them. And that is from the adults that are involved and the adults that are responsible for their well-being. Shh. Well, that was the, the um, Anna Kasparian from the Young Turks that um, was uh, uh, doing this story. And I'm going to let her finish. So it's Mark Chivarella and the other judge is Michael Conahan. And uh, they, you know, were getting a deal. Like, hey, send more of these kids to our uh, for-profit juvenile facilities and we'll give you some money. And they collected... Uh, $2.8 million in illegal payments to do just that. Shivarella ordered children as young as eight, by the way, to detention. Many of them first-time offenders deemed delinquent for petty theft, jaywalking, truancy, smoking on school grounds, and other minor infractions. The judge often ordered youths uh, he had found delinquent to be immediately shackled, handcuffed, and taken away without giving them a chance to put up a defense or even say goodbye to their families. We'll hear from one of the victims in just a moment, but Cenk, I want to give you a chance to jump in. Okay, these judges are the worst people alive. Absolutely. Um, so as cancerous as they are, though, they're not the underlying problem. The underlying problem is that we allow for-profit prisons. So you know what the judges did first? They helped to shut down a county-run juvenile detention center. That's the way we used to do things in America. Hey, when we're taking away somebody's freedom, the state needs to do that. If, because if we allow private companies to do that, they're going to have a profit incentive to take away freedom. And we lost track of that. So now that for-profit prisons exist, for-profit prison bribes the judges. The judges shut down the county-run one. They then say that every kid that comes in, because they're going to make they make money per kid, they're like, they don't care about the law or justice or anything. You come in for anything, boom, you're gone. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Because they're getting paid for it. Why? Because a for-profit prison is getting paid more and doing a kickback to them. Are we insane? Are we insane that we allow for-profit prisons? Yes. I guarantee you this is happening all across the country. You know why? Because there's evil people in the world. And you, the minute you give a profit motive for them, they're going to do it. 
And by the way, of course, the for-profit prisons afterwards, and this is a case from a long time ago, got way smarter. They realized, oh, you don't bribe the judges one by one. You bribe the politicians. They shut down the public prisons for you. They uh, start the private prisons. And then they make the laws tougher, tougher, and they shovel all these kids and take away their freedom so we can make a buck off of them. And, and then when we complain about it, then everybody agrees, the right wing agrees, left wing agrees, doesn't matter, they already bought the politicians and it's already over. So they're doing this to your kids all across the country. And it ruins their lives. In fact, uh, at the time the story broke eight years ago, Democracy Now! had talked to one of the victims and she talked about what she experienced and how she didn't even realize she was being prosecuted by this judge until she was being booked. So let's take a look at that. I was about 14 years old and I got into an argument with one of my friends and all that happened was just a basic fight. Um, she slapped me in the face and I did the same thing back. There was no marks, no witnesses, nothing. It was just her word against my word. My only charges were simple assault and harassment and I didn't even know the charges were pressed against me until I had to go down to the intake and probation and a lot of whole bunch of paperwork. This makes me really question other authority figures and people that were supposed to look up to and trust. I mean, she has been a judge for a long time from what I know, and a well-respected one is what I thought, and I obviously not. It just really makes me question and not trust other people. I mean, if someone like Judge Chabrillo can do this, then it makes me believe that anyone can portray a lot. Watch this. Ah. Uh. Are y'all hearing this? Are y'all hearing this? Because we talk about grown folks in the prison industrial complex. Are y'all hearing this? What they doing to our children? Oh, God. And if that's not sickening, I don't know what is. However, the good news is the corrupt judges must pay $200 million. So those judges are responsible and for $200 million to be paid back for their role in um, for their role in profit the prisons. So with that being said, y'all, I want to know what y'all think about that. What you think about the children, our children being incarcerated the way they are? And that they also have been used for private prisons. What's up with that? All right, you guys. Leave your comments below. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and share the channel. And uh, stay safe out there. Hug your babies. <laughs>